Subin, uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about today is webtoons, and you've written about webtoons in the press. But I, I want to ask you before we begin, what exactly is a webtoon? Because it's a comic, but it's not a comic. It's a little bit different from what we have in the West, I think. So what is a webtoon, Subin? Yeah, well, <laughs> that, re that reminds me of the... Uh sort of little incident I had like 20 years ago. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I was having a chat with my expat friend and I, well, I was so, so young and had no idea of how the term Webtoon uh, came into existence. So well, since it is, well, technically English terms, but right. uh, yeah, yeah. So I just guessed everyone uh, in the West knows the term. So I used the term, and but none of them was getting it. Right. Yeah. So I was quite perplexed that yet. But now, well, probably it was fifteen years ago. But now, well, when I do uh, search on Google with the term webtoon, mm. well, there are lots of English materials on it, so a lot of lots have changed, and right. yeah. Well, but to get back to the question, so webtoon is basically it's a portmanteau word, yeah, mm -hmm. web plus cartoon. So uh, basically, uh, it is a digitalized web comic, but the style and mode mm. of expression is pre pretty different. Yeah, from this traditional comic and well the uh south korean webtoon is um influenced a lot by the japanese manga mm. yeah but but the thing is when uh, the with the birth of webtoon and the lot of things especially this uh, structure mm. and uh, this style is changed a lot from this Japanese manga. So, uh, well, so uh, I would say this basically the digital comic optimized to mobile device. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you get print webtoons or are webtoons only digital? Because a lot of people, like, I see them sometimes by subway stations. There's these old, I think they're manhwa like shops or something, old comic book shops. Can you get print webtoons or are webtoons only digital? Well, uh, mostly in digital only, but mm. some of the uh, hit works do get printed. Oh, really? But, okay. Yeah, mm. yeah, but there is a one uh, uh, some issues because this webtoon is basically uh, digital oriented. So mm. uh, you need to just cross scroll vertically to see the follow the follow the story but mm. well in but when it comes to the printed form you need to have to turn the pages so uh, it is so uh, yeah so, so there is a, a different uh style and base basically uh originating from this medium mm -hmm. so it is one is computer mobile screen and one is print pa papers so there is a, yeah, yeah, there is one issue. Well, and I don't think it will be uh, easily uh, addressed. Yeah. So uh, it, it is also interesting, yeah, thing. And they're, they're read, so they're read digitally predominantly and they're read vertically, you say, rather than a comic yeah, right. book, which is side to side. Do, <clears throat> do people talk about it? Because traditionally Asian languages are read vertically as well, aren't they? They're sort yeah. of read back to front uh, from what I'm used to. It's not back to front for, for the people here. But do people talk about that? Is there anything in that that they're used to reading things vertically or that's there's just no connection there? I don't think it is connected because, well, the in the early days of mm. Webtoon, well, these artists and the uh, companies or agencies just try to uh, copy the pretty format into the computer screen. Mm -hmm. So there was a uh, panels uh, which you can uh, 
see from left to right and then below mm-hmm. yeah typical comic book style but well as the uh, platforms trying to optimize getting all all their contents optimized into this mobile screen mm-hmm. so they s- slowly began to adapt this vertical form yeah so uh, basically it is yeah derived from this the very nature of this screen mm. medium yeah so it's based on the technology not the traditional writing systems that yeah, does right, make right, sense right. i just wanted to check um mm-hmm. i i've suddenly realized that i have no idea how old you are subin um oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how old are you subin yeah so i'm uh, i was born 1984 very good yeah so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, 38 yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. okay looking yeah. good for 38 you said when you were speaking sort of whether it was 15 years ago about this idea of webtoons to your friends um mm. who were non-korean and they didn't understand it they were like what's a webtoon um yeah what were they being watched on now because most of the time now webtoons are on smartphones i yeah, guess right, and right. pads but 15 years ago was it just on like a computer screen that they came to popularity mm-hmm well uh uh yeah yeah so uh, basically um, most of the webtoons are now being consumed with the mobile screen right mm-hmm. so uh, well in the be- in the beginning well many people used to read webtoons on their desktop mm-hmm. but so but well as soon as many people in korea uh, get to use and as mobile phones become their, well, getting into it, their everyday life. So, mm. um, yeah, so platforms had to adapt to the, this new, yeah, development. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, yes, and st- still, yeah. And, yeah, I, so b- basically it is all about mobile device and mm-hmm. it helped very, uh, this, uh, it did a very great, great deal to become uh, making this very original style of expression mm. and mode of production for this webtoon. So, yeah, and so uh, from uh, so uh, from my point of view, what's very interesting in when it comes to webtoon is there's well. It is is industrial aspect. So, uh, well, before the birth of webtoon, well, mm. South Korea also had a pretty well, pretty matured comic industry. Sure. Yeah. 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 It, yeah probably it was until this, the so-called uh, uh, IMF crisis. Mm. Yeah. The, the Asian financial crisis. Yeah. We, they used say in English so but but in Korean well we all say IMF <laughs> it's weird isn't it you call it the thing that kind of saved you it's the IMF yeah. <laughs> crisis right. yeah so uh b- before the crisis there are a lot so South Korean uh industry comic industry was almost identical to the Japanese one mm. so there are lots of comic magazines and then a lot of uh uh, printed books, mm-hmm. and, but uh, when the crisis came, everything just went to went into the ruins, so uh, all collapsed. And then it was weirdly, oddly enough, well, mm. the industry couldn't stand up on its own feet. So what helped this? new revival was the internet companies yeah especially web portals like naver and down mm. now it now it is part of kakao so uh, so what i believe that this uh well some kind of uh, sort of fusion with the internet web portals uh, really made a big difference and big potential for the webtoons to be uh, mm, break through the this uh, limitation mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. 
the traditional economics because just like you said well still many especially uh, many in the western world see the um, comic as a well um, fringe culture right yeah well it's like nerdy. simpsons caricature caricature yeah, 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 isn't yeah. it that kind of thing yeah yeah pretty nerdy and well with all the these manga style uh female characters and you know yeah but this uh with the um, collaboration with uh web portals south korean webtoon finally was able to this break this wall of mm. uh, bias mm -hmm. so uh, that the, so they made a lot of very uh, uh enticing story tell stories not just for this uh adolescents uh kids or some some sort of nerds so mm. uh, one thing i one work i th that i think this uh, made a serious breakthrough in how people well uh, when it comes to south korean people mm. Their understanding and recognition of webtoon is the um, missing is basically uh, about this office life mm -hmm. of yeah ordinary uh, office office worker. So uh, they this all the office politics and these heroes struggle to get some recognition through mm. these older you know, office politics and things works so many well people in their 40s even 50s somehow get to will relate themselves into these characters so yeah and so it also it was also adapted to a tv drama and well was a really really big hit i so i think yeah it also opened up pretty big window for this mm. yeah, company yeah mm, tv produ productions because they were always looking for the better uh, stories and then they some after the success of missing dramatized missing mm. and they saw this big opportunity in from this world of webtoon so they they had a lot of uh, very interesting stories not just some zombie or yeah school love story but they also had very you know, interesting stories even from this uh normal ordinary adult mm -hmm. yeah so i wonder if that makes it <clears throat> that makes it different because sometimes when i associate western comics and this is my ignorance because when i was young i'd sometimes read like the beano or dandy this is just uh like kids cartoons comics but when i think of western or american comic books i think of superheroes if i think of japanese i, I might think of monsters or tentacle porn or something like that but you're talking <laughs> it's my ignorance that does that it's a stereotype but when you talk about me saying and these kind of korean webtoons in terms of the content it's about sort of office life and hierarchy and day-to-day -day struggles and things like that do you think if you look at the content of korean webtoons is there more focus on that is there still superheroes there's still like the kind of weird stuff as well or is it more day-to-day -day? Uh, but has it changed over time i guess as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but now the webtoon industry is really quite big in Korea so there are yeah, yeah variety variety of topics and subjects so but I I don't believe now we uh mm, superhero thing is isn't uh majority mm. yeah I don't think it is so uh, well any idea why well, that is mm, well uh uh well the, so uh, people uh began to seek more uh down to earth mm -hmm. thing so yeah. uh super so still there are uh characters and heroes with some supernatural powers but it is more down to earth so mm. uh, they don't just 
like uh, fly like a <laughs> Superman, or, but just they, so they very down to us characters who just a simple um, student or mm. office worker. So s- someone you can see everyday yeah, life, but somehow they get some supernatural power. And so uh, they can now do something they w- they w- weren't supposed to do and so people so uh, some of the uh popular webtoon has that kind of element but mm. now there are uh, many uh how should i say um uh diversity and so mm-hmm. like, especially uh so uh, um there was a recent uh, survey on the webtoon artist and well what i found interesting was that uh, well when when you come to think of uh comics well it is male dominated uh culture we tend to think mm. yeah and that is our bias but now more than 60% of the webtoon artist in korea is female so uh, there are a lot of uh romantic uh webtoons mm. so it is about basically so day-to-day uh struggle <laughs> for uh, romance love and yeah so and that uh works can get to dramatize to the tv a lot yeah so mm. now yeah yeah that's, that's what i think mm. yeah. i I'm sure there are probably some people listening that don't quite realize how many of the Korean dramas or movies that they've seen start from webtoons. Um, And one of the things that I've noticed, you just mentioned about this male bias, Subin, that we think sort of these comics or these webtoons are, are produced predominantly by men or read predominantly by men, adolescents. When I'm in South Korea, if I go on the subway or the bus, you see all kinds of people reading webtoons it doesn't seem to be just one demographic it's not just the kids or but the 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 salarymen or the businessmen in their suits will be often reading webtoons on their phones you you have a a woman sat there reading her one as well not as much i don't think the the older people once you get above 50 or 60 but from i don't know from teenage to to sort of 40 it seems a lot of people are reading these webtoons so how do you understand like that demographic what's your take on which people are reading webtoons and how common are they among korean society Mm -hmm. yeah well i i think you're also uh what you witness is pretty accurate because yeah a lot of uh people well regardless of their age group tend to consume webtoon a lot yeah mm. so yep well as as you just said i'm not sure about uh, how uh what about this age group of yeah older than 50s but well i'm pretty sure this from 40s to teenagers they mm. all yeah voraciously <laughs> read webtoons so uh, yeah i think it's Basically, uh, it this so um, this is quite uh, close to the uh, that of Japanese industries because in Japan mm. everyone tends to read comics, you know. So it is their part of their life. You know, so yeah, deep and deeply permute, permutated into their uh, mm. culture, so, but well in the other part of the world it is not quite the case yeah because now still it is uh supposed to be a part of a fringe culture but Mm. in korea it is uh, quite different and i think this well web portals did a lot to make this uh make webtoon to be this popular because well 
now it is no longer the case but well mm. for for a very very long time web portals tend uh, tend to offer webtoons for free because well from the beginning that the one of the mm, clinging issues for the web portals is this mm, low low engagement from these visitors so what well, because it is a web portal so mm -hmm. people come to do some searching and then uh, they leave after what they get what they want wanted so mm -hmm. yeah so the web portals always wanted to have something that can hold their visitors for a long time and one of the one of the items they discovered was this webtoon so they began to uh, pay out the artist mm. well really small amount of <laughs> fee and yet yeah, so to get them draw some webtoons for their web portals and then they yeah offered it offered them free to visitors so it since there is no cost required mm -hmm. to read webtoons and then people always especially when the during this commute they have a lot of free time and they right. don't know what to do and yeah, so so they and well well um yeah so people uh began to read a lot of webtoons during their commute and so it helped a lot uh for this the whole industry to get mm. more wide demographic as their consumers just very quickly subin on that connection between the the portals and this would be like what naver down like is that right the equivalent yes. of a uh, korean google or something bing yeah. the, i don't think anyone ever used bing um but the, in the connection between the portal sites and the webtoons for example if i think of k-pop like if you think blackpink you're like oh yg and if you think of I don't, i'm going to get these all wrong now twice oh jyp you associate different groups with those entertainment companies is it mm. the same with webtoons and portal sites like ah oh, that's a a, a naver webtoon that's a down webtoon does it work like that or um i don't think so because uh well if there was more more web portals mm. no well, there, there used to be a uh, korean yahoo and yahoo also uh offered a lot of webtoons in yeah in those days mm -hmm. yeah but now this well it is basically uh neighbor and down and nothing else so um, are, are they yeah. exclusive you can get like say there's a webtoon you yeah, can yeah, get yeah, it yeah on neighbor and down or it's only on neighbor it's only on down yeah it, it is usually exclusive yeah but well because if if it if it is not on neighbor probably it, it will be on uh, down and uh, mm. cacao so uh, i don't think people do associate the there, I don't think there, there is a strong association uh, with a certain kind, certain type of webtoon and with mm. the web portals. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned um, Niseng a little bit earlier. Now, yeah. if we think of, for example, K-pop, we go maybe Soteji and Nanareo, like Gushi mm -hmm. 1992. And if we do K-dramas, it might be Gyolyonga, Winter Sonata, and that, right. which is like early 2000s. When you look at webtoons or a study of webtoons, where do you think like what's the first one or what's not the first one but the one that has a an impact that makes a mark do you think oh yeah yeah uh, there is a uh, general agreement among uh, experts scholars of webtoon mm. that uh, well it is usually uh, said that the there is a webtoon artist uh, Gang, Gangpul, Gangpul mm -hmm. and, and he is uh 2003 webtoon which is called sunjong manhwa i mm, i don't know how to put this uh in in english but it is basically basically a uh, uh 
a love story between a young office worker and the female uh, high school girl. Um, so, uh, well, technically, digitalized comic was in existence long before that. So mm. uh, there were a lot of lots of dedicated this digital web uh, digital webtoon magazine. Well, which was established one on in uh, 2001. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this Sun Jung Mana 2003 comic was made a huge hit. So probably it was the first hit webtoon. Yeah. What was so, it about it that hit? Like, so you said it was this love story between the office worker and the young girl. Mm -hmm. What was it that made that one special? Why did that one sort of that 2003 gangpul one yeah um well i believe well so uh if you get to the search google on this webtoon Sujomana, mm. and first thing you notice is wow he's a terrible illustrator <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the, the uh, picture is yeah. Yeah, not not so pretty yeah but as you might have guessed from this well, love webtoon all of love story. So, uh, re the characters are well, rather homely, I would say. But mm -hmm. uh, he's a pretty good storyteller. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, long be long before that, the webtoon is considered to be uh, mainly about short comic strip about people's daily life. So, yeah, um, there was once there. Once upon a time, there was a term, ilsang um, tun. So uh, it c could be translated into mm. uh, everyday cartoon. Mm -hmm. So it is basically not not so dramatic things, but this well, the artist contemplation on his his or her everyday life. Mm. Yeah, but and and. Well, traditional comic is still was still uh, considered to be this kids and adolescents thing, but this Sun Jung Mana uh, again uh, probably for the first time uh, break open people's mind about this mm. how this webtoon could be. So it is a love story. So and a very romantic. And so, uh, even people in their thirties and forties can relate to their, their relate to these char characters. So, mm, I Does think. It... Mm, Go on. Yeah, yeah. So it it was a huge success, and mm. so it it also so uh, there are, since there was a lot of re request and uh, demand, so it also get to be in the printed form yeah so there is a book and comic book and i yeah 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 ah. so you know it also was dramatized into a film yeah probably at 2004 or 5 okay. so, because yeah it was pretty like successful so yeah so it is one of the first uh webtoon which changed people's uh, understanding uh, and recognition about what webtoon could be. Mm. Yeah. When I hear the character, because I have no, I haven't read it or seen it, so again, it's my ignorance. But when I hear the characters involved, like a male office worker and a young high school girl, you, I'm immediately thinking of the age gap and things like that. But <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh, when I think of K dramas, especially around that time they're very disney they're very romantic they're very pure actually those k dramas like i mentioned winter sonata it's all about purity chastity and like the the the, the drama korean drama might um finish with like a a peck on the lips between the two main characters and that will be the the big moment is mm -hmm. the romance in the webtoons around that time that that gangpul one and is, yeah. is it like that? Is it similar to K-dramas or is it a bit sort of more punchy, a bit racier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say it was uh, similar to this K-drama, but uh, a little 
there was a small twist mm. in the female character. So, well, usually in, uh, especially in the old days, K drama female character heroine used to be uh, very pure and so ma meek and mild and right. but in but uh well so what makes kanku as a very sh shrewd storyteller is he managed to put some interesting twist into this character so uh, this female character was well very uh, pretty but she had a very full mouth so mm -hmm. yeah they so it gave in a little twist in this whole story line yeah but also the it also gave this character a more lifelike feeling yeah mm. so that that was one of the clever invention i think so um, basically it is still pure romance but with more lifelike and some uh bias breaking mm -hmm. characters yeah so yeah yeah i think it is one of the uh ingredient of x success yeah. that's a very cool thing that if it challenges expectations or you have these female characters that are swearing and and doing yeah, those right, things yeah. i watched a, a little bit of jiu uh jiu hack uh, uh the, mm -hmm. the new zombie one which was originally a webtoon and i learned so many new swear words in in the first few episodes <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> right, right, right. i was like wow that's a good one i'll write that down um is yeah. is gangpool still doing stuff like is, is he still going or is it finished or you don't know or... yeah well i don't i don't think he is now uh, that too active so okay. he he still uh sometimes makes some webtoons i guess but not not that much active like in his earlier days well he's he already made so much money so i don't think he need to work <laughs> anymore <laughs> Fair play. Well, well let's yeah. talk about money actually then subin that's a really good segue because in that article you wrote for al jazeera which i read um you look at some of the challenges that the webtoon artists uh, are dealing with and this comes about because of the increased competition industrialization and korea's own Right, economic situation. I read that before the COVID-19 pandemic, Korea was already the second most unequal society in the OECD. And in your article, you said that a survey found that Korean webtoon artists, they're working over 10 hours a day, six days a week, um, but also that they enjoy this kind of celebrity status. They rub shoulders with K-pop stars. They have a massive income. So Gangpool might be rich and kind of retire, semi-retirement now, but what about the rest of these webtoon artists? Who are they? Where do they fit in Korean society next to K-pop stars or actors or what's going on with mm -hmm. them? Yeah, so uh, mainly these webtoon artists, uh, hmm. well, average webtoon artist is graduated some uh, art school mm. specialized in uh, this production of animation or cartoons because so uh, it all started with right after this Asian financial crisis so uh, at at the time the president Kim Dae-jung wanted mm. to uh, promote this country's cultural industry so um, they he put a lot of emphasis you know, cultivating this one and so there was a uh, what well, there were uh, at that time there was no term such as k-pop but this right. popular music and this film industry and animation comic so they uh made a lot a big investment especially this uh education system so there was so probably uh the first ever um department of comic and animation production was uh i think it was in 1996 i guess mm -hmm. yeah so it, it was pretty uh early so there was a and and after that these uh, many universities and 
you know that the polytechnic colleges adopted this new department mm -hmm. so there were a lot of young people uh, graduated from this universities and colleges with this degree major so they began to write uh, webtoons and but these well basically there is no such require well formal requirement to be webtoon artist so mm -hmm. all you have to do is you know these computers pens and <laughs> and some yeah you know, tools and, and quite uh, interesting storyline mm -hmm. so 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 I would say the bar is pretty low right yeah, to become a webtoon artist which translates into very high competition mm. yeah and well this uh, but also there was a so uh, basically uh lots of um, webtoon artists well had a formal education in this production of comic but also there are uh, um, someone who had no formal education in the production of web, uh, comics so they just uh, happen to be in love in drawing comics, webtoons, mm -hmm. cartoons, and then uh, they uh, put put up put on uh, their artwork online, and then somehow it gets popular, and then this some get contacted by agency or webtoon platforms and made debut. So. And there was recently there is one interesting case which is mm. uh, even and well which shows how webtoon is popular among the Korean people. So uh, this guy, uh, his first webtoon is about the doctor of internal medicine. So he opened his own uh, hospital, personal personally run hospital mm. and well as well people th think well when they when they see a doctor probably they will they are rich and right. yeah you know, well even if he isn't isn't at the moment but soon you will be quick uh quickly get rich but this webtoon uh, depicts this new doctor's struggle to uh, make some money. Mm -hmm. So it is so uh, mm, so realistic and comic. So um, so mm, like just people think. So this protagonist just simply thought he will be get uh, he will be rich soon as he opens his own hospital but mm -hmm. well it is not easy so and he has to learn some uh, marketing and yeah you know, that uh, gimmicks so uh, he and so uh, the webtoon uh, portrays very funny funnily his struggle so uh, now and later it turned out he is uh, turned actually his job is a uh, doctor of internal medicine so wow. it is it was basically about his own experience and now so uh, because it is also this uh bias breaking story stories so sure. it became yeah it is became really popular now i i heard now he is not running his hospital he is now kind of full-time webtoon artist wow. and yeah so and it is announced that the webtoon is to be dramatized with uh with a with male lead as i forgot his name but a very famous male actor is to play the main protagonist and what's the probably... name of that webtoon subin this yeah, one yeah, with uh, the doctor 
Yeah, oh yeah, it is called Nekwa Pagwonjang. Okay, that so, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So Nekwa means internal medicine yeah. and this uh Pagwonjang being and Dr. Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it is really interesting. Uh <laughs> funny. So uh yeah, yeah. so uh, uh practically practically everyone can become a webtoon artist and so there are really really strong competition among these mm. web yeah, artists who would be artists so um, this uh, part of reason why webtoon artists tend to overwork is that it is uh, it is basically derived from this huge competition well i can i came to think this hyper competition is very uh, distinct characteristic of korean everything korean <laughs> yeah but so yeah. Uh, yeah so during my research for the al jazeera story i interviewed uh, one young female webtoon artist so she's uh, she was about 23, 24, and she just graduated from this uh, college. She majored, majored in webtoon production. And mm -hmm. then, well, right after she graduated, she just uh, managed to make a debut in the this major platform. Well, uh, so it is well, considering this strong competition, yeah, it is a very mm, huge success for a young artist like her. And well, I when I asked her, so uh, are you mm, are you satisfied with where you are? And her reply was quite shocking because what she said was, well, if has she known um had she known that the life of webtoon artists uh especially this work workload mm. to be this this burdensome she probably wouldn't have chose chose to be uh become a webtoon artist so uh, she, yeah so she works 10 days or 10 10 hours a day and six days a week, sometimes full seven days. Mm -hmm. Even though she hired personally two assistants, because uh, as competition getting harder and harder, the platforms and the agencies requires more output from the artist. And uh, since the artist are all fragmented, so there is no uh, big union of mm. artists because they are all individuals. So basically, uh, more like a uh, you know a gig worker because they are all just individual, and now they are not uh, formally hired by any company. So mm -hmm. so there is little uh, protection. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to this, the work environment and you know the stresses, so people, so they don't know how to. Uh, they just they just know don't know how to uh, solve this problem. And so all the all these heavy workload and stresses. Mm. Yeah. So. So some of them make very big money. I would say it is also very highly polarized. Yeah. So uh, some makes a little big money and they kind of enjoy the celeb celebrity status. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But the majority of webtoon artists still suffer from this heavy workload and they don't know how to uh, how to solve these issues 
I guess in some ways that's kind of like its strength and its weakness because if you only need a pen, a computer and an idea, that means anyone can do it. You don't need the backing of a table or all of these things. And, um, you know, whether you're a young woman or a young man, you can get into it. But then then the workload. Who are the big stars? You said some of them are sort of, you know, making bank and, and really dominating the Webtoon industry. Um, Gangpool, you said, is in semi-retirement. I'm racking my brains to try to think of the guy's name from uh, Nan Honsan, Nan Honja San da. Dung Dung. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Kian Palsa. Yeah, Kian yeah. Palsa. Who are the big yeah. names, do you think, in the industry at the moment, uh, Subin? Hmm. Who are the stars? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a yeah. He's a kind of mm, one of the biggest celeb celebrity webtoon artist, and also from a uh, female artist, there is a uh, mm, artist whose name well, they they all tend to use nicknames. So right. there is a one female artist uh, whose nickname is Yaongi. Uh huh. So. Uh, she so she draws a very really 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 uh pretty beautifully illustrated webtoon mm. and is which is basically about you know a uh, romance of one one female lead character and two male leads so uh these two are uh, competing mm -hmm. to oh yeah against each other to get her love, and so the illustration is uh is really well done and also uh, which is something I I found it very interesting the artist her, uh, herself is also <laughs> so very pretty mm -hmm. yeah, so um, she uh, posts a lot. A lot of her picture on Instagram and what people really love. So uh, especially, uh, yeah, well, every male, male audience, female audience, they all love her photos on Instagram. So mm -hmm. yeah, so he, she made a lot of money, and also with he, her, yeah, fabulous visual so she yeah she also may uh enjoys a celeb celebrity status yeah. does you said her name was yao ni yao ni yeah yao -ni. Meow. yeah like, like a, a, meow. right yeah. right right does yeah. does she have like one webtoon that she keeps because again I, I don't really understand does she have one webtoon that she keeps doing does she have like four or five webtoons like is it one continuous album one continuous story this love triangle with the woman and the yeah, 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 guys? yeah yeah it's just that one keeps going yeah yeah there is yes yeah, so well i i am not sure well probably she did other webtoons before but mm. well this one is the most successful and well i don't personally follow these webtoons but uh my wife <laughs> said so she uh just well basically these in in term in terms of storytelling it is mm. already fin it has to be finished by now but she just keep goes on and on yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it is yeah <laughs> and people and audience always make some uh criticizing comments replies in her webtoon that well j it just dragging along too long but the thing is all of them are still reading it yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. what you just said that maybe your wife was reading that young Ni one what about you subin did did you did you read webtoons you still read webtoons what's like your own personal experience did you ever ma i was thinking about this did you ever try making your own webtoon like or... oh yeah <laughs> yeah so well when yeah when i was really young and yeah i also te i also used to draw just yeah love to scribble mm. yeah on the on the uh, margin of my textbooks <laughs> and yeah, during my high school days yeah so i um, yeah, I sometimes I 
thought of writing and making webtoons on my own, but but you know this competition is really strong. So yeah. now they require lots many things, including well, during this traditional comics day, you don't you don't have to uh, colorize every page. It was mainly black and white, mm. but nowadays every webtoon is well beautifully colorized because you know, due to the fierce com competition well just agencies and platforms require mm. the artist to do, yeah make every visual element stand out yeah so well yeah and and regarding the question of uh, my reading habits <laughs> so yeah i tend i used to read a lot of webtoons well like 10 years ago mm -hmm. yeah you know, and but now i don't read that much yeah and you know so yeah after mm, after your question i've been a little bit uh thinking about this one uh, one webtoon i can recommend yeah yeah because well you you know now um, especially um, netflix seems seem to be very fond of uh south korean zombie apocalypse thing yeah. So there are kingdom and now all of us are dead. Yeah. Sweet home. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, mm, there was a very interesting uh, z zombie ap apocalypse webtoon in Korea and which has really distinct style and very good story. Mm. So the title is uh, Damage Over Time. Yeah, Damage Over Time. Mm. So basically, and this is also very this the setting is also very distinctly korean because it is about uh one uh isolated military base so there are <laughs> so soldiers yeah and just doing their time in the <laughs> military but somehow zombie ap apocalypse broke out mm. and yeah so they were cut off from this upper echelon and other units and so now they are trying to uh, survive on their own so, so they began to make some uh, uh, how, trenches and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, build up some trenches and do regular patrol and so from out of this so they uh they are they mm, there exists some uh, internal feud between these uh factions mm -hmm. of so this party has they have they have their own leader and so they come to cl uh, clash with, against each other mm. so you know, it depicts very well how this um people's behavior and how they think yeah it is kind of uh load up the flies right okay yeah, yeah, yeah happen yeah. to yeah yeah in the military setting yeah. and this style is very also um, distinctive because so the artist produced all the um, artwork with the uh, dot dot painting okay you, you know this, yeah it, this yeah 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 so it is very 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 distinct style mm. so yeah so i personally hope netflix to <laughs> yeah produce this uh, new tv show based on this damage over time and and paging I... regina kim i'll get her on the phone she's she's working for netflix <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right 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 yeah, yeah. regina <laughs> we've just on that idea of um like the zombies and this damage over time like some people have shown me webtoons before and you're talking about the art style of this one where i'll they'll say david read this and i'm scrolling down reading it and mm -hmm. all of a sudden like 
as I'm scrolling down this comic vertically with images and then all of a sudden like the screen will freeze and a noise will come out and this zombie will appear on the screen. Yeah, right, 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 right. It, it freaked me out. I nearly threw my phone at somebody. I, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, <laughs> yeah, come right. on, <laughs> mother. It was re really scary, actually, because you're not expecting it. Does that happen in a lot of webtoons or is that just like some kind of gimmick that not a lot of people use? Because that's what really separates it, I think, from a uh, maybe a drama or a normal comic book. Because after that, I was actually kind of scared to scroll down because I thought I was going to get shocked again. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't think it is mainstream yet. Okay. Yeah, because well, yeah, this is a really interesting question because well, I I got to uh, conduct some interviews with uh, all the timers all in this industry. So mm. many of the executives of now one big now uh, the biggest webtoon agencies are. Uh, spend their mm, they began with this the mm, traditional comic industry right yeah. so they so they have their own mm, understanding and concept of how com um, good comic should be so they some of them don't like even vertical scrolling type because mm. yeah they don't think it is the they just feel that is right because to to their mind which was probably formulated during their traditional time so this tra traditional with uh based on printed pages mm -hmm. these panels and yeah you know, from left to right and then goes down is the what the what web to, uh, what comic sh ideal web comic should be so mm -hmm. some of them mm, didn't like this universal adoption of uh, vertically scrolling and similar thing is also happening with this the interactive element you just mentioned mm. so um, some of uh, one executive told me that the well, mm, they they don't try to do that too much with the local audience because now Korean audience they are very well uh, used to the traditional. Now now it is became a, now it became a tradition. So the vertical mm. scrolling and yeah. The, Nothing happen. Nothing happen happens. No scary shows. But they try to uh, do a lot more when they go abroad. So uh, during, so uh, some of them trying to do some business in uh, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. where webtoon is still relatively new, and these audience were not used to the traditional form, vertical scrolling form. So they uh, are a lot more open to the new type of this mm -hmm. interactive element. So uh, as you saw all this, I, you can see this interesting, this how something new becomes old. Yep. And then even what well, South Korea is this well uh, originator of this new uh, popular cultural form but they tend to somehow get uh, become re um, how, sh how should I put this this very conservative because right. well when you when you think so South Korea is the the originator of new form of art so they, you tend to think they are always be open to every new mm, attempts but people get ten, people always get mm, old from uh, as time goes and yeah. they can sometimes well long 
what, 20, 20 years ago, probably they were one of the very for, uh, forward looking people. But now as time goes, they can get conservative Absolutely, and yeah. sometimes very reluctant and even uh, is repulsive against the new um, attempt. Yeah, so that's what I found very interesting. Yeah. A lot of people still want music to sound like it sounded like when they were 15. You know, you don't want to grow yeah, up. Right. That's that's the kind of thing you want. And it's, it's really interesting, Subin, that you say that people outside of Korea might have less preconceptions or prejudices to these interactive mm -hmm. elements of Webtoons, that that might be the thing that excites them. Whereas internally in Korea, there are these kind of expectations of what it should be so on that do you think i mean my it's weird like my mum has watched k dramas now in england on netflix and uh, <laughs> uh, my, my brother's fiance likes blackpink and things like that so that's genuine success overseas with the dramas the movies the music do you think can can webtoons do it has it already done it it doesn't seem as mainstream as the other sort of hallyu elements Mm -hmm. right, right. do you think it will go will it become a success or will it remain a bit more limited yeah that that is uh, also my question mm. for w when i look into the webtoon industry so uh yeah media global media attention is low yeah because right. yeah, yeah it, it makes perfect sense because since unlike k-pop or k-drama well webtoons global impact is much smaller than these other uh, cultural products. So, and also market size is much smaller. So, um, mm. uh, well, there is a estimation from uh, probably a P P uh, PWC. Uh, so, uh, yeah, market estimation. So uh, it is estimated that global comic market mm. is of 2000, 2020 is about uh, 11 billion dollar. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it sounds pretty big, but when you compare it to that of film or music industry, mm. it is uh, just one one fourth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and when you when you compare it to the global video game. Well, video game is more than 10 times bigger than the comic market. Right. Yeah. So uh, it still go, it has to go a lot more ways to be really get recognized by and this global audience. So, and the thing is, well, South Korean Webtoon is pretty doing well. Yeah. This uh, global market, but the thing is more than 60, I may, I may be not, I might be wrong about these numbers, mm. but the more than 60, 70% of global market is just Japanese. Okay. And yeah, so South Korean, uh, webtoon platforms did a, uh, a very, made a very strict, strict strategic decision to make Japan as their first overseas target mm -hmm. and they made a pretty good success. But the thing is, well, still while Japan is the one of the by far the biggest coming market, but still is confined into just one mm. yeah, big Iceland. Yeah, so uh, still in the Western world, this uh, global recognition of Webtoon is, I believe, pretty uh, remains at fringe fringe culture. Mm. So, uh, so uh, my question is, will Webtoon get beyond Japanese manga's accomplishment? So uh, Japanese manga, well, did the big yeah, made a big accomplishment because right. so uh, when people, the Westerners tend to, when it when they hear the 
or Japanese culture, they will always comes uh, one of the first things comes in mind. What in, comes in their mind is manga. Right. So yeah, they made a big recognition, but still the manga is the industry is very strictly co limited, confined to this Japanese territory. So there is no French manga or American manga is the very, I don't think virtually non-existent. Mm. So, but now South Korean platforms and agencies now trying to build uh, um, and trying to uh, cherish the local webtoon artists. So they trying to um, find out the new talent in the West. So they are putting a lot of effort in this. And well, so uh, if if they make some success to making the each Western country's own webtoon market. Mm. I believe it is it is fairly safe to say webtoon now surpassed manga's accomplishment. So that is my key question. So mm -hmm. I, mm, I think it is a little bit away from this goal, but I yeah, but pretty soon we will see how it works works out. And I guess, like the the Netflix that we talked about earlier, and the dramas, they might play a role because it's interesting to see how much of yeah, the, yeah, yeah, right, right. the Korean content that's coming out is based on webtoons. So I, I might get some of it, but like Itaewon Class and Ojingo Get Squid Game, and mm -hmm. what's it called? We're All Dead. Do you have Digumuri Like yeah, these yeah. Are all come from this webtoon industry initially. And, and they're driving those kind of K-dramas. So it might not be the webtoon industry itself. It might be, like you say, but it might also just fuel the K-dramas. I think that's really... Because they have, like, these, I guess, these natural resources, right? Like, a country might have oil or gold. Korea has these webtoons, <laughs> like, as IP, yeah. international... Uh, not international. Intellectual property that when it wants to yes. make something, it can just go, let's make that, let's make that, let's make that. Yeah, yeah um so uh, i i think perhaps subin should we move on from webtoons is there anything we've missed in webtoons i feel like yeah, i feel yeah, like yeah, i've yeah. learned a lot about webtoons in this past hour <laughs> yeah yeah but th there is one thing i'd like to add yeah, about yeah, yeah. webtoons yeah, because that just like you said so uh well still a lot from the western world recognize webtoon uh not from the webtoons is themselves but from this netflix adaptation mm. of, well uh technically uh squid game is not uh yeah, yeah not webtoon based but anyway okay, this right. yeah yeah sweet home this all of us are dead King, even kingdom was uh first uh, originally released as a webtoon okay yeah yeah so uh, and also uh in terms of uh cultural economy I think Webtoon has a very good potential to be a, well, a sort of this Goldilocks medium of storytelling because, mm -hmm. well, it has enough visual element to grab people's attention. Not, yeah, well, sometimes words alone are not enough to grab people's attention. So mm -hmm. there has to be some visual element. So Webtoon has it. And also it is fairly cheaper than making drama or film yeah yeah so so it is very much economic in terms of using uh resources so uh, also from the reader size it requires no significant significant resources to read so well when you see when you try to watch netflix video or film you you gotta have fairly good screen mm -hmm. and uh, fast broadband internet connection but but when it comes to webtoon well it doesn't have to be that much good mm -hmm. so uh, 
you know, some uh, a Chinese Chinese cell phone, a cheap Chinese cell phone with uh, rel um, relatively just um, fairly stable internet connection is enough to read. And you can read it from your commute with, mm -hmm. with ease. So you don't have to full 100% attention to enjoy this stuff. So many people I interviewed for this Webtoon story uh, said that the Webtoon's success is uh, partly based on this kind of snack culture mm -hmm. element. Yeah. And since it is a uh, lot more easier and cheaper to produce than the TV drama and film, so there could be, well, more diverse stories and styles can be experimented. So mm -hmm. probably it could help yeah, a lot to um, develop and discover more uh, fresh and, inter and enticing stories. Yeah, that's what I believe. So I, yeah, so, uh, uh, well, now, now, um, some scholars tend to talk of transmedia. So basically there is one IP and mm. lots of different media. So it could be, uh, consumed as a, and produced as a novel, but also mm, video and drama film and even game. Mm -hmm. and so I believe a webtoon could be this, the centerpiece of this transmedia world right. because it is fairly visual and also economic to produce. Yeah, so that's what I believe. So that's why I think Steel Webtoon has a big potential. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's a really interesting idea. And now you mention it, you said that sort of Squid Game wasn't a webtoon, but it almost feels like it should have been because it's so visual with the, yeah, the, right, the, right, the right. outfits and the mask. Are you, for some <laughs> yeah, reason, true, true. I, I can kind of picture it as a webtoon, but it, it, it's not. And that's, that's interesting, this idea of transmedia, because it has such a, what, like this low uh, barrier to entry. Does, you don't mm -hmm. need millions to make it like a, a Netflix series or, or, or a movie. You can make it, you experiment, and you get this kind of diverse. That's the important thing, I think, isn't it? The webtoons give more diverse content. Yes, yes. They, so, they get into the... Yeah, so uh, regarding Squid Game, well, I heard that uh, the director had this plot like 10 years ago. Right. So yeah, he presented all the uh, film agencies he could find, but they all rejected the idea. So he, so he had to wait like 10 years to finally get some confirmation from other uh, production that which was Netflix. So what I think, what I imagine is that what if the director Huang mm. was able to make it as a webtoon first and then so probably it made a ser serious uh, rep 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 percussion from this audience so mm. maybe it was it could be earlier only to be adapted to the film or the drama dramatic form so then it wouldn't come out during the covid19 pandemic and then it wouldn't be popular <laughs> because everyone was maybe. everyone was stuck at home <laughs> or if it comes out as the webtoon first then all the people that read the webtoon will be disappointed with the drama I mean, that yeah. always happens, I think, right? It's, it's not the yeah, same yeah. thing. It's, it's... Yeah, but yeah, but these the audience, webtoon audience, tend to be pretty fond of this uh, TV dramatization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, industry inside insiders say because they already well when when you have some uh, adaptation of novel they they love they, because it is all based on words so they have right. their own pictures of it and what they see on the screen is quite different so they tend to disappoint it a lot but the webtoon is 
visual element is already there. Mm. So uh, it is fairly easier to for them to get adapted to this you know screen form. That that's what they say. So well well I don't I don't believe it is always the case, but the mm, one thing is for sure uh, is that the uh, audience had has tend to um, or have less uh, um, repulsion mm. about these things getting um, dramatized and yeah yeah because for example when i, I watch some of ito on class and you have that um that really those really distinctive haircuts of paxiori this mm -hmm. kind of like i don't know what you call it like this come bang this fringe but then you go and look at the yeah. webtoon and it's exactly the same and and so yeah, they yeah. are just the visuals are already there it, it'd be really interesting to look at some of the worst uh dramatizations of webtoons because i'm just thinking now of like when they made movies of things like resident evil or street fighter or mortal kombat most of <laughs> these were terrible man like they suck <laughs> right, right, like right. they couldn't get this this ip into movie form and be successful right you know there might be mm -hmm. some limited things i don't know tomb raider or something but I'm, I'm just trying to think like now be interesting to explore what were some of the the best and but more what were some of the worst or least successful dramatizations of the webtoons mm. yeah okay that's that's for the next time we talk i think then yeah yeah <laughs>